but we're just gonna kind of continue uh, looks like uh, that's better thank you mags for letting me know beautiful all right so uh, let's pick up where we left off here anyway if you couldn't hear uh, any of what I was just saying because of those audio issues basically this is a thumbnail we selected from last week um, we we put together a, a series here of different thumbnails and some people in the comments were voting on which one they really wanted to move forward with and uh, it seemed like there was an overwhelming uh, support for number nine here so that's what we're kind of moving forward with if you're interested in checking out more of how I put these thumbnails together you can check out that live stream video on my channel uh, every live stream is available for viewing after the initial stream so you can check that out there and so we've put this into a new canvas. I've also created a short little reference board for us here. I might even pull in a few other pictures uh, as well uh, just to, um, you know, just to kind of give myself a little bit more inspiration here as I need it. Uh, typically, I prefer to assemble my references at the beginning of the, um, of the, uh, of the process, but um, you know, as I move forward, sometimes there are ideas that I need uh, to move forward. So I'll, I'll go online and, and find some new images to add to my reference board. But uh, anyway, looks like uh, our audio issues are resolved. So let's just keep moving forward here. So there, like I said, there are a few different ways you can go about this. You can literally copy and paste that thumbnail image onto your new canvas. Uh, or you can start from scratch and really try to work that, that idea up from the bottom. Uh, I tend to prefer to do it this way just because I, like I said, there's there's a lot of value in the, um, <laughs> in the values of the thumbnail sketch. And that can really sort of, um, you know, can really serve as a nice baseline to move forward from. Even if the shapes and all of that are a bit unrefined. Hey there, Queldar. Welcome back. Um... Or Keldar, I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> um, which one it is, but uh, anyway, you didn't you didn't miss much. Uh, apparently, there was some some serious uh, audio looping there before, so um, we've uh, we've managed to resolve that. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and save this because uh, it's a good habit to get into. Let's throw this in art videos, live streams, etc. This is live stream number 27, 37, oh my god, it's been a while, alright, just reopen that a little, real quick, alright, so I'm going to start out with a quick color balance, I already have something in mind for this color scheme, I'm starting to see a bit of like a, a possibility for like a desert or kind of like a, a wild west uh, kind of vibe here, so I actually might try to pull up some some references from some old movies maybe later on in the stream here uh, but uh, Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and just do a quick color balance. Actually, let's try something new here. Usually I'll just do a, a Color balance, but I've actually been using this awesome Photoshop feature recently called gradient map and It can be sort of hit or miss uh, but you know really it w basically what it allows you to do is map specific colors to different values in your painting. So if I just start out from this grayscale example and then I take this brightest tone and I move it, we can immediately see that our brightest values are going to pick up that color. So likewise, we can leave our darkest values Maybe somewhere in this range. We'll leave a little bit of that black out there because we may want to use that later on. But actually, let's give it a little bit of a blue tint in the shadows. And then we can add other intermediate colors. For example, let's bring in like a little, maybe a little red orange here. And that'll give us a bit of that ambient glow that, and, and that reflected light that we can see uh, within those, uh, those sort of shadow areas where the, the light is bouncing around. And then maybe, and we can, we can actually get kind of, uh, 
get kind of wild with it. We can introduce some other uh, sort of contrasting tones within those shadow regions as well, where there's going to be some reflected uh, skylight color from above. So this is a really cool way to move from grayscale into coloring. Uh, your piece already, you can see we have a really nice theme going on here with our colors. Hello, welcome Shri J. Uh, I don't think I've seen you here before, so welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm just going in here and doing a bit of a color uh, gradient from my grayscale layer before we get going here. And already this kind of looks like sort of like a poster art or something like that. It has this really nice uh, effect here, and we can actually get kind of kind of wild with these colors. We can sort of um, can sort of really you know mess around with it a, a little bit, and get some interesting combinations. That's kind of cool. All right, I think that's a good baseline. So we went from that to that. Pretty significant difference. And then what we can do as well is another handy Photoshop trick here. I'm actually going to take this layer. I'm going to select it and invert it. So we're selecting this blank space here. This is a really useful tool if you're ever trying to expand your canvas or if you're moving, uh, just copy and pasting an image into a new region you can use this method. You just select that inverted area on the same layer, and then we hit Shift F5. Make sure your um, your uh, what is it the the uh, the F key lock is off, so you're not just if you have a keyboard that changes your volume as well. You have to make sure you do that. So we'll just do a content aware fill here, and we'll hit OK. And usually, um, it will. Uh, just sort of fill in that space based on the algorithm that you've already sort of established uh, within your painting. And I don't think it quite worked there. Let's try that again. It can be a little bit finicky, uh, and I'm not totally sure what the, um, you know, what the algorithm is uh, with this um, with, with this process, but sometimes it, it, it will be sort of hit or miss. And I think I had the layer locked there too, so let's just try that one more time. Otherwise, we can just go in and, and uh, paint some stuff in there. And look at that. We basically just have an extension of our painting. So now that we have our basic colors down, we can start to go in and refine some of these shapes. I'm just going to kind of start out with a soft brush just to really solidify some of the value choices I'm making here. And then I think what's going to be important as we move forward is to keep this uh, character in the foreground on a separate layer. Now this isn't totally necessary and like I say in a lot of my videos, uh, oftentimes I just prefer to uh, move forward with some with, with all of my elements in the same layer here. But uh, in this case, because this is, we're going to be doing a lot of work there in the background and uh, it'll just be a little bit easier for us to move this character into a new layer so we don't have to worry about uh, sort of messing up the, the solid boundaries we create uh, with that character. So once we do that, we can go in and pick our uh, mixer brush here we can just sort of fill in that that background space a little bit really get a nice clean edge going on here so now we can see the characters on a new layer underneath it's just kind of a mess uh, but we won't worry about that so much because we're never going to see it, really. And now I'm just going to go in and start to start to do a little bit more uh, sort of color blocking here. Sort of think about areas I want to increase contrast a little bit, increase detail. 
without sort of losing our initial vision here. We can also start experimenting with some ideas around the architecture here, around the shape of the buildings and the crowd and all of that. Of course, right now, this is looking very, um, <laughs> this is like a bit too, uh, a bit too close to, uh, the actual, like, Mandalorian, uh, art direction here. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some ideas and sort of push this in my own direction a little bit, uh, you know, just to, uh, make sure my channel isn't, uh, taken down here for copyright infringement. <laughs> Um, but also just because it's, you know, it's it can be really fun to, to take a character like this and just sort of explore some, some different variations and try out some new stuff. And I'm just going to go in and, and once again sort of just fill out that space uh, behind him here. And as we're setting this up, we want to think about establishing, uh, you know, Establishing concrete silhouettes, so either light over dark or dark over light. So I'm making a deliberate choice here uh, with this character to go dark over light on one side and then light over dark on the other. And that's going to give us a really nice clear silhouette uh, regardless of the lighting that, that's uh, being sort of played across this character here. So we can go in and start to introduce a little bit of color variety as well. And it's pretty simple. We can just keep adjusting our, our hue slider a little bit. Picking colors that are on the canvas and then just shifting them a little bit. Start introducing some local color variation or just variation for the sake of variation. Sometimes It'll just look better to have a little color variety at your disposal here. Maybe we can use our lasso tool. create some solid shapes here And then, this area here, I think we can play up these blues a little bit. You know, really have them pick up on some of that sky color. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is separate out this area as well. Just so once again, we can get that nice crisp edge. We can always lose it later if we want, but as I, I often say, it's a bit... Uh, easier to to lose an edge later on in the process than it is to create a harder edge. So I've merged 
uh, those two layers with the character as well. And now I can sort of safely just go in here with my mixer brush and play up this blue a little bit. You know what, since I have them, maybe we can just try out a little bit of uh, photo texturing here, just as kind of a baseline. Yeah, so uh, Keldar here is saying, find it hard not to make it muddy or chaotic when I start adding hues. Um, and that's, uh, it's a, it's a great point. I mean, there are a few ways around that. Um, but mostly, you know, try to make, start with some subtle color variations, you know, when you're, when you're moving around your, your slider, um, you know, just start by maybe reducing the saturation a little bit, or just moving slightly into a different color zone here. Um, grays are always going to be your friend when you're transitioning from one extreme to the other. And they can actually be quite powerful, you know, if I start to introduce some, some grays in here they can serve as intermediaries between you know for example the uh, the red on one side of this helmet and the green on the other but you know for the most part just mess around with it and um, you know you can also use a brush on on color mode I I, I generally don't because um, you know when you when you use a brush on color mode uh, when you already have your values set you have to be, be very careful that you don't sort of bleed uh, into your other values um, because every value, unlike, you know, with, with a gradient map, for example, every value corresponded to a color. But when you go over with a color brush, um, you can risk using the same color for, for several different values, which is, you know, immediately looks uh, a bit suspicious. Um, but uh, Marco Bucci has a really great video on uh, color harmony and color variety. Uh, you should definitely check it out. You should check out his channel. He's got a lot of great stuff on, on that there. And by the way, uh, if you guys have any questions as we go through here, or any comments, any, any questions about uh, your artistic process or, or challenges you face uh, when you're painting or working digitally here, uh, please feel free to drop that in the comments there I'd be happy to uh, to discuss that with you all right so let's bring up our, our reference board here uh, these are pretty low res uh, images usually not something I would use for for photo bashing but since we're just sort of you know using this as a base layer maybe we can try to find something with, with roughly the same angle, and I think this will work here. So let's just um, use that. And of course, it's a, it's a stock photo here, but since we're not actually uh, using this uh, or replicating this, uh, we're just kind of using it as a, as a template here, as a bit of a textural starting point. Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. We can actually set this to... Uh, Let's try, multiply can be pretty good. Um, I saw it. <laughs> Sometimes I just scroll through these and kind of see what works and what doesn't. Um, this, is, this looks like color burn. Uh, actually, let's convert this into a smart object first. one looks pretty good and maybe we can just knock down that opacity a little bit sometimes it just takes a little bit of experimentation actually probably the first thing we should do here is try to match this with our existing 
color scheme here. So maybe we can actually uh, just grab our color balance. Sort of move this in the range that we're looking for. And then we can use a mask layer here. Should also probably reduce our shadow values or bring those up a little bit just to match the, uh, the overall value system we have here. And then we can bring down our other values to match. Then we can just do another color balance. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of back and forth tweaking here to, to really make this, this work. Hello, Jose and Aniket. Welcome very much. Uh, I'm just actually, I'm experimenting a little bit with some, some photo bashing here, which I usually don't. Well, not photo bashing, I guess this is more of a texturing. Um, I'm actually going to throw this underneath this other layer here. But I'm just kind of using this as a baseline, sort of a jumping off point here. And once again, I'm actually going to... I'm going to drop down these highlight values a little bit. Let me get it closely to, close to that value range we're, we're looking for. Uh, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I hit that button by accident and I don't know what button it is. Uh, but it, <laughs> it makes everything red, and then I, f I, I, I kind of have a, a moment of panic where I don't know what I did. Uh, but somehow I've made that disappear now, so if anyone knows what that is, let me know. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Maybe we can experiment once again with, with some, some overlays here. That darker color is a nice one. Overlay also works. Let's try darker color here. Maybe we'll just bring those values up a little bit more. And then we really want to solidify those blues in the shadow region, so. Okay. Now let's go back to our mask layer. And there's a lot of stuff down here that we just don't need to be that high contrast. I just want to lower that contrast using this mask layer so our silhouette is, is more readable here. So that's a nice kind of base texture. We can actually just move that around to different parts of the painting here. Set it on different types of layer modes. And that's just kind of a nice base texture we can use to move forward here. Oh, awesome. Nathan is uh Nathan is saying Q is the the quick key for quick mask. That's I, I actually remember learning about that. Um and I never really followed through with that um that investigation, but maybe that's something I'll learn if it's a a useful uh a useful tool. Hmm, interesting. All 
All right, and because uh, I don't want to make things too complicated here, I'm actually just going to merge those down, and then we can sort of go in and start to do some some painting here. Before we do, let's see if we have any other um, textural things we can use here. Um, I don't have any photo textures that um, that we can apply in this situation, but there are a lot of you know a lot of tricks we can use here to sort of quickly create some some interesting uh, building textures. So let's give that a whirl. For example, I have this uh, brick drop brush here, which I actually have not been using so much, um, but it can be really useful for, for applications like this. Uh, I'm actually going to just reduce the color dynamics a little bit. Uh, so we have a little bit of variation there. That's going to help with our color variety, uh, but not so much that uh, that it's going to, to be... Uh, that's going to affect our values too much. So I'm just going to create something like that. And then we can sort of um, use our, our transform tool. Do create a, some textures of our own here. Copy and paste that, move it up a little bit, use our distort tool once again to make sure our perspective is in line here. We can actually just merge those together, copy that, paste it, and use this kind of wherever we want. You can even set it to different layer modes here, see if there's something that will we set it to lighten and then reduce the opacity, that will leave some nice uh, shadow values in there as well. Now we can do the same thing. If we grab our brick stroke brush here, we just sort of tap some stuff in. Maybe darken that a little bit. Use that to create some textures as well. even make that selection. Use that. Or invert that selection.
I think there's some perspective corrections we need to make over here, so let's do that. I think that would be a bit more accurate. We can grab the uh, the same brush we used to create that texture in the first place. Let me pick a lighter color here. Hey, how's it going, Ernesto? Welcome. Oh, I see this is still set to overlay. That uh, explains why I wasn't uh, going anywhere with it. Okay. Let's try that again. I've uh, just gone ahead and merged those layers. Looks like there's probably going to be a section here at the end, too. That's getting a bit of direct light. So we can go ahead and paint that in as well. Maybe some nice reflected light over here. And it's probably time I kind of take a break from the texturing a little bit just to do a bit of good old-fashioned uh, painting here. Hey there, Douglas. Welcome. How do you activate the navigator window? You can go up here to window. I think you guys can see that, right? Yep. And then uh, down to navigator here. Just check that on. Uh, sometimes it will be embedded in another, a bunch of other um, windows in this tab group, but you can go ahead and just close those out.
kind of like this cropping here. Maybe we can we can use this. Just to create some, uh, I don't know, some interesting variation in the, the architecture here. Looking pretty cool so far. Do something similar with this other side here. those down and I think overall my gut feeling here this whole section is just a little bit off I think maybe it's this Let's try this. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's looking very, very rusty. Let's make a nice little doorway here. going to deal with this space. I think we can just repeat this theme. I don't want to overcomplicate things here, but let's try this. Now we're starting to develop a little bit of a visual theme here with the architecture.
<laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome to welcome to grab the brush pack. Uh, the link is in the description below if you haven't. Uh, all of the brushes I'm using in the stream are are from that pack. Create a little bit of atmosphere out here as well. Let's just grab our soft round brush here at the base of these buildings. Just sort of play up that that, that fogginess a little bit or dustiness. You can do the same thing down here. Since this character is uh, out here is going to be fairly important, let's just go ahead and give them sort of a, a bit more of a solid edge here. Give them a bit of an interesting story. start to create some other sort of rough silhouettes around here as well. Start to paint out some of the tops of people's heads here and there. I 
Let me create a little bit of color variety in this crowd as well. So that's something we kind of took out when we when we added in this texture. I think maybe this character, this target or whatever they are, can just have something a little bit distinct, you know, a little, a little bit of green or something. It'll help them to stand out. Maybe even a, a little bit of a highlight from the sun. I'm just sort of going around and imagining imagining might be what imagining what might be in these um these little hidden spaces here and there. something really weird at this perspective. Let's go ahead and try to fix that. shadow coming out here as well. Something about that is still looking a bit funky. Looks a little bit floaty. Try flipping it vertical, see if anything is making sense that way. Maybe we can just take a 
soft round and go over this. Believe it or not, if you're making good design choices, they will also work upside down. Just kind of going in with my pencil here and highlighting any areas, people that might be getting hit with some some direct light here. Yeah, maybe it's that door. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's bothering me. I guess it shouldn't be there. Yeah, that's way better. I don't know why. Simpler, I guess. I think because that shape maybe was kind of imitating what we have going on here with our silhouette. And I don't want to sort of draw the eye away with, with, with that kind of thing. I forgot about this brush. This is kind of a nice one.
We can make some some solid, more solid uh, silhouettes here within this crowd. Let's try that. Reverse that. You can even copy and paste that. Oops. Wrong uh, keyboard shortcut there. Maybe flip it. <laughs> nice. I love the uh, the story that's that's uh, evolving here in the chat. <laughs> okay, uh, we are just about a little past our halfway mark. I'm gonna take a quick three minute break here, and uh, then I will be right back to uh, to finish this guy off. So don't go anywhere, and um, I will be right back here. All right, uh, let's dive right back in here. So, just after stepping away for a minute, definitely seeing 
this shape up here. can adjust the perspective a little bit just to show it's a little higher if we assume these two shapes are sort of identical uh, we should actually take this one bring it down a little bit like that And then we can go in and fill out that space behind. Merge these together. Okay. I was thinking too there could be some... Uh, I don't know, usually there are like some kind of clotheslines or power lines or something like that <laughs> kind of sweeping across like this, so I'm throw a few of those in there as well. Yeah, that's always, I don't know, I feel like that's always, uh, in like these marketplaces, you know, there's always some kind of drapery or like, yeah, just little, little things, little things here and there. Probably create some like, uh, boxes and stuff too, I don't know, those are, those are small details, but can be important. Little things stacked here and there. Maybe even some uh, some windows or something. Thank you. 
All right, let's uh, return to this character here because this is going to be an important, uh, an important thing to develop. I think first I just want to go around and sort of solidify some of these highlights. Hey, Nick. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> nice, uh, Keldar's doing a little, uh, narration here. That's awesome. Uh, looking forward to, uh, seeing that published with this piece. Yeah, I'm kind of going in and, uh, just doing a bit of, doing a bit of, uh, design here. A bit of helmet design. Just kind of fun. I don't don't do that quite often enough. But I'm using that reflected light from the sky to help define a lot of the uh, these shadow areas.
Oh, maybe, uh... <laughs> Just had an idea here. Well, first, let me do this. Let's get a little bit of that reflected light here. And then... Bring it back. Um... What if he had, like, a... He's holding a pistol. Or something like this. That's actually pointing at our target here. <laughs> Not actually pointing, but pointing compositionally, you know. It's kind of a wimpy uh, firearm there. Let me beef that up a bit. <laughs> Instead of a gun, it could be a handheld radio, so he could express his undying love. You know, that would be that would be a bit more of a positive spin on this whole thing, wouldn't it? Hmm. Trying to figure out a way I can make this stand out a bit more. 
either with dark on light, light on dark here. Oh yeah, make sure uh, make sure you check out that um, composition challenge uh, on the Evident platform. Uh, it's really uh, there's, there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff going on there. Uh, we had a nice chat with Tyler Edlin last week, uh, and now there's a um, a cool challenge happening. So make sure you check that out. I can throw a link in the uh, description or you can just find it at evident.com. Um, there's always some really cool stuff happening there. And since I'm plugging things, I might as well mention that uh, the links for uh, the mentorship program are also in the description below. Uh, that's just a uh, an opportunity for for you to uh, meet with me or a group uh, during certain times of the year and do some uh, some live one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring for your your art skills. So be sure to uh, to check that out if that's something you're interested in. I'm actually, working on. Uh, new website right now whole new system of uh, doing things so keep an eye out for updates on that as well See how this looks upside down once again. Yeah, and we have this whole uh, section up here as well with this rooftop. You can go in there and give that some nice uh, direct lighting as well. Maybe not quite that intense. Soften out some of those edges too. Thank you. 
can clean up some of the stuff up here as well. I got a little messy with it before. I guess I am painting on that other layer. I guess I can merge these all down to one layer now. Not a huge deal. Got most of my my major elements in there. Sure, I'll regret that later, but uh, no, I think it'll be fine. Can use that same strategy that we did before. Just create some general impressions of people here and there. And have some of that light coming in as well. That's kind of nice. Those uh, highlighted edges there can be a nice effect. Texture in there as well. I don't want to take that and I just I really want to push these blues I had some really nice strong blues in here before and I think I've lost a little of that so I'm just gonna dial that up a little bit that might have been a little bit extreme but Sort of light beam coming in there. Guess I can do that with the 
the linear dodge brush as well. Let's set this to linear dodge. glint. Yeah, we could have some little highlights perhaps down here off of these uh, these characters. Yeah, they are looking a bit all sort of blended together, right? That's a good idea. It's funny you said uh, troops, Nick. Uh, I had not even thought of them as, as that. I I kind of just thought of like in my head this was like just sort of a bunch of citizens in a marketplace unaware of of what's uh, about to hit them. I guess either way something's about to happen here, but we don't know exactly what it is. That is nice though, that was a good idea with that. These little highlights in here, I think they really, really are helping to to capture some of this some of this lighting coming in down here. Hey Sabrina, welcome. Yeah, feel free to to watch this later on. Uh, I'm probably, probably going to cut out the first, like, uh, three minutes or so as um, i, <laughs> I got to listen to that after this. But uh, apparently I forgot to turn off my uh, desktop audio uh, through, through OBS here. So um, there was some serious uh, feedback looping happening. Uh, fortunately, a couple of our... Uh, early comers here picked up on that and uh, informed me so I was able to able to fix it pretty quick but uh, yeah you didn't miss much there this has been uh, a cool one though I'm, I've been trying out a lot of a lot of strategies I, I think I don't usually uh, use You know, I started out with just sort of some loose uh, texturing and stuff like that, but
think I'm probably going a bit extreme with this uh, soft brush over here, but I just kind of want to take a lot of these details here that are a bit, um, I mean, they're not details, they're just sort of, I don't know, to me, they're kind of distracting elements. You yeah, have pretty much kept the same uh, same sort of color uh, arrangement since the beginning. I've just kind of built on it a little bit here and there and, uh, you know, embellished, added a little bit of variety. But, I mean, overall, yeah, I think I've just sort of maintained this. same kind of um, sort of like a tricolor very sort of uh, pared down kind of warm versus cool strong primary colors here I kind of want to push some of these greens a little bit more just as a little little accent there there's really no uh, not even any reason for them to be there I'm just putting them in because I think it looks cool. Kind of gives you a gives you a break from uh, what everything else is doing here, and sort of helps to highlight what's um, what's important in this painting. I think finally, I just want to tell a little bit more of a story with this character down here. Really, they were kind of, they kind of had like a bit of a staff there for a second, but I don't know if I want that. I kind of want them to be a little bit, a little bit wary of what's going on here. See if we can create some some tension in their their body posture. Maybe it almost looks like they're running at this point. Which kind of adds a, a little bit more of a <laughs> dramatic uh, dimension. And maybe just around this, um, this focal area, we can be a bit more specific with how we're painting these things out. I'm gonna create some more 
sort of solid silhouettes here and there. Hmm. No, that kind of messes things up, doesn't it? Maybe a few more of those. Uh, I'll just do this on a new layer because uh, I mean we can have some some more of these overlapping things here. Exactly, but I'll just throw some some stuff like that. There's people hanging their clothes, that's all. I don't know if that helps or hinders this painting. Let's flip it upside down and see. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right spot. That's kind of interesting. I don't know about that. <laughs> I feel like this area just needs something to... Some kind of silhouette here. What if we... Well, there's something casting a shadow here. Right? So maybe... Um, maybe there's like... Let's just try to make an object and see. Just need something to kind of break up this. Space over here. It kind of works. It just doesn't really have a function. <laughs> Maybe that's uh, it's too large scale of a change. What about that? That's kind of cool. Ooh, dust particles. That would be cool. You know what? Maybe we don't need this. Let's just make some dust. I have a brush for this. Might be a little intense, though. Might have to erase out some of this. Or all of it. It's 
that's yeah it's more of a splatter kind of thing but we can go in and erase around it get rid of all those big particles there Oh yeah, that's a nice. I'm starting to see a little bit in the navigator. It's still a little bit, a little too intense, but that was a good idea. Nice little specular effect. Give this area some texture. Maybe we'll just move that up a little bit. Maybe we can use our light beam uh, brush as well. <laughs> that might be overkill, uh, but let's let's see what happens. I'm curious. Oh, oh, hang on. I have a little. Ooh, look at that. That's kind of nice. I don't know. It is a little bit overkill, but uh, what if we use it over here too? Kind of messes with our values a little bit, but it's nice. It's a cool effect. Maybe for this one, I'll use something a bit more. Oh, these aren't even set on, uh, well, actually it is, yeah. Set on linear dodge. Oh, but the layer, I see what I'm doing wrong here. The layer must also be set on linear dodge. That's kind of cool. It's a little bit too intense, so let me just take that take that down a notch. And then we can use that again. Over here, let's just use a different color. Maybe we don't need it over there. But it's kind of cool. Here we can make a little selection. Maybe just take that down a notch. It's a little bit intense. I almost feel like we can go back in now. Darken some of this, but I, I don't want to lose too much of this detail. Maybe, oh, I know what I can do. I'll copy paste this. Darken it. Then create a mask layer. We can just paint some of that in. Let's reduce that uh, saturation as well. All right, just gonna darken this up a little bit, just so when we throw on that linear dodge effect. sec what did I do <laughs> oh I gotta raise these uh, shadow values a little bit okay now zoom that Let's take that off for a minute.
Oh, it's still set on linear dodge. Oh, God, I always forget about that. Okay. We can kind of dial some of this stuff back. I think that will work. Okay. It's pretty good. Now we can just, um, actually in this area, I just want to bring out some of our highlights that we established before a little bit more, especially around this, this helmet here. Why? Why is it doing that? It's very odd. Oh, I set the opacity down. Okay. It's this music always comes on right at the very <laughs> Makes everything so dramatic. Uh, all right, here we go. Here's our highlights. Here's another a few over here. All right, it's probably good. Now let's take all of this, copy paste, and let's do a quick levels adjustment. Bring up those shadow values. think I do want to go in here and just darken a little of this as well All right, that's probably where I'm going to leave it for today. Cue dramatic music. And I think I like it better with this orientation. Actually, I think what I will do real, really quick here is just leave a little bit of a, a little bit of a cool light silhouette here. Okay, let's uh, let's do a quick um, before and after here, or we can bring that up in uh, in our reference board. Uh, comparison pretty cool all right well thank you all for uh, joining me once again uh, today it's been an awesome uh, stream with you guys I appreciate you showing up uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel uh, I do this every Sunday uh, and I release new uh, tutorial videos and time-lapse videos and stuff like that every Wednesday so you won't want to miss that kind of stuff uh, once again, there are links to my brush pack that I used in this video as well as uh, my mentorship program and some other great stuff. Uh, our Discord channel uh, where we chat about art and stuff during the week. Um, that's uh, included down there as well. So uh, I hope you all will uh, join me once again next week. And until then, this has been an awesome uh, stream. Thank you guys for showing up. And um, uh, have a great afternoon, evening morning, whatever time it is for you. All right, take care.